Welcome back to the Express at Heritage Woods Secondary. Thanks for not making me sing along. <laughs> of course. <laughs> this is a pretty awesome event and it's all student run? Yes, it is. So students run it from an IBS class and we, are, we plan our events independently. We just have teachers just supervising us. And it's great. Yeah. So you plan the entertainment, there's food, and where do the seniors come from? The seniors uh, come from senior homes in the Tri-Cities. They just love coming here and they have smiles on their faces the whole time. And how does it make you feel? Why do you do it? I do it because it's, it's nice for the seniors and then if they're happy then it makes me happy that, I've, that I know that I've done something nice for them and, and so that makes me happy that it makes me feel like I've achieved something. Well, you definitely have. Congratulations. Love the hat, too. Feels like Christmas, right? But don't forget, Movember just wrapped up, and we have some big news. Here at Granville Island Brewery, they brew thousands of liters of beer each year. But during the month of Movember, some of that beer that's enjoyed helped out Prostate Cancer Canada. The third year that we've been supporting Movember, uh, very excited about it. Uh, you know, the first year was just an internal event that we did with our staff and we raised uh, a few thousand dollars and we thought, well, I think maybe our beer drinkers would love something like this. So we last year we took it to the marketplace behind our very popular Lion's Winter Ale. If you haven't had the Lion's Winter Ale, it's a darker beer that has hints of vanilla, caramel and white chocolate. But if you ask Brewmaster Vern for that secret ingredient, you won't get an answer. We're looking at about four weeks to make it. Um, the process isn't that much different than any of our other beers, you know, with the exception of a secret ingredient or two, which uh, you won't get out of me. Men are, are, are not so good at that. We you know, avoid the doctor like the plague and we don't like to go, but at least if we can start a conversation with men about men's health and about prostate cancer and, and gaining awareness for the cause. One success story this year is of a female patient asking her doctor about his mustache. Jesse Heyman of Movember Canada says this simple conversation may have saved her husband's life. She looked at me and said, I don't think my husband's had, a, had his prostate checked or had his PSA. And so he came in the next week to get his PSA done and found out that he has prostate cancers and was being treated the following week. This year, the Granville Island Brewery has raised over $90,000. Having support from companies like them has helped Canada to raise over $38 million up from $22 million last year. So a very successful year across Canada for Movember. Now speaking of success, it's now time to announce the winner of our Movember Mustache Facebook competition we had running. Thank you to everyone who submitted, but there is just one winner, and that's Jacob May. So congratulations, Jacob. Enjoy your Movember goodies. For now, I'm Peter Verge in Vancouver for The Express. Congratulations to our winner. Enjoy all those Movember goodies, and feel free to shave it off now. Movember, you can donate to the cause year-round and you can start planning for it next year. I'm sure Peter verges, but maybe right now you're planning for Christmas or planning for your next trip. If so, we've got some great ideas for you with today's Escapes. Want to go on an adventure? Let me take you there. I'll give you an insider's look on where to eat, play and stay from the expats and the experts. All this without ever leaving our own backyard. Known as the crossroads of the Americas, the country of Panama has been inhabited by humans for at least 10,000 years. But what has put Panama firmly on the world map is perhaps the famous Panama Canal, which draws thousands of visitors each year. I sat down with Latin American Studies professor Dr. John Beasley Murray at the University of British Columbia to find out the history of this vital economic man-made structure. For the viewers who don't really know about Panama's history, can you enlighten us a little bit about basically how it was discovered and um, why it's so vital to the world? The Spaniards came across Panama, or what's now Panama, uh, very early. It's the place where they first sighted the Pacific um, and kind of the part of the realization, right, that this is a new continent. Panama exists because of the canal. The canal uh, took essentially 10 years to construct between 1904 and 1903, 1904 and 1914. It was opened in in 1914. And because it's the thinnest place, the thinnest part of the isthmus, uh, where the Atlantic and the Pacific are closest together, uh, all sorts of uh, goods, originally precious, precious metals, and now everything from, I don't know, DVD players to cars to everything, uh, flow through it. The most amazing thing is just standing on the balcony, looking over the locks and watching as the, as the boats come through. It's quite a procedure. It takes about 45 minutes, an hour or so, for a boat to, to make its way through that particular uh, set of locks. 
Panama may have been defined by the canal for the better part of the last century, but it's the country's natural gifts that will make it shine in the present. Panama has the largest rainforest in the Western Hemisphere outside of the Amazon. Its jungle is home to an abundance of tropical plants, animals, and birds, some of them to be found nowhere else in the world. You may think I'm standing in one of its rainforests, but actually I'm in the next best thing. Before taking a trip to Panama, I've come to Vancouver's Bloedel Conservatory, where I'm learning what to expect right here at home. Opened in 1969, the Bloedel Conservatory has over 500 varieties of plants from three stimulated climate zones, subtropic, desert, and of course, tropical rainforest. Hi, Carl. Hi, nice Hi, to meet nice you. nice to meet you. I'm so excited to be here at the Bloedel Conservatory and learn all about the crazy cool plant life here. What type of tropical life can we expect in countries like Panama? You're gonna find a lot of tropical rainforests, thick brush, heavy plantings of trees. Um, there are quite a few bird species there. Some of them we have here. Well, the first flower I want to show you is called a heliconia. It's this red one here. Oh, wow. It's one of my personal favorites. Uh, they grow all throughout the tropical countries. And they are native to South America and Central America, so you'll definitely find them in Panama. Wow, now this, this kind of looks a little bit foreboding. It's not poisonous or anything. No, not at all. In fact, it's closely related to the bananas that we eat. So this is it. These are the banana trees. Wow. We have them all jazzed up for our Christmas show that's going on. And this year, you can see if you look up, it's flowered. Oh, and yeah. And it's been producing little bananas to eat. They're that's, almost ripe. That's amazing. Now, now, the bananas that grow here, are they the same kind of types of bananas you'd see probably in Central America? They are. These are two birds that you'll commonly find in Panama. They're called uh, green wing macaws because of the wow. green on the backs. And this is Carmen and her sister Maria. Keep your eye, eyes open in the trees and you should find them flying around. Oh, wow. Most birds will mate for life. When they find wow. their partner, they'll stay together. Um, parrots in general, uh, macaws specifically, are very bonding creatures. Uh, even two females will bond together. Oh, like these wow. sisters here. They, they very much hate being separated. So. Oh, wow, that's great. And considering the fact that they live for um, you know, up to 100 years, almost like humans, that, that is a long, very committed <laughs> friendship slash relationship. It certainly is, yeah. <laughs> it's been so fun being here at the Bloedel with you, it's Carl. It's been great talking to you, too. To see what the Panama has to offer up close and personal, they say the best time to visit is during the dry season, which runs mid-December to mid-April on the Pacific side. You're watching The Express, and we've got more Ho 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 coming up. After this Christmas, he'll be planted. Eco trees and Lohi Town Center's spirit of Christmas. The Ladysmith Light Up on Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. The Express. We are your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV. Provided by The Lounge Hair Studio. LoungeHairStudio.com the West Coast, Lotus Land, Hollywood North, home to a hundred languages and as many faces and voices. In communities atop mountains and in cities on the sea, friends and neighbors, parents and children, dog walkers, social talkers, and vintage rockers. It's where we all come together. Your neighborhood, your community, your local voice. Shaw TV. Welcome back to the Express at Heritage Woods Secondary in Port Moody for their annual Seniors Christmas Tea. These teens have really found the true spirit of Christmas, haven't they? It's about giving, sharing, celebrating. Well, up next on the Express, it's our Lohi Town Center Spirit of Christmas, where we have some nostalgic traditions that get a modern twist. Lohi Town Center's The Spirit of Christmas is sponsored by Lohi Town Center. It's that time of year again. Time to revive some holiday traditions, but with a modern touch. First up, the Christmas tree. If you're dreaming of a green Christmas, there are several reasons to choose an Evergrow Christmas tree. Well, first of all, it's convenient. You can go to our website and order the tree like you would uh, order anything else online, and we deliver it to your home. Also, the Christmas tree here is, uh, it's, it fits with Vancouver, because Vancouver is such a green community. It's a tree that keeps on living, stays alive, and uh, that's the whole idea there. We also have cut trees, which are 
We have two species that are no spray and they're also grown within the 100 mile area of Vancouver and uh, grown in BC as opposed to being brought up from Oregon or Washington or Alberta. Um, so that's a, definitely a green aspect as well to our cut trees. I decide on a potted live tree, which will be delivered right to my home for Christmas and picked up by the Evergrow team after the holidays. And what's going to happen to this one after Christmas? And this one, after this Christmas, he'll be planted mm -hmm. and uh, probably in Langley somewhere. Um, yeah, along with uh, many other... And grow to be have, very tall yes. and have a, sure a very long and wonderful life. Yeah, they'll be here longer <laughs> than we will be here. So. <laughs> it's now time for a very Canadian winter tradition. Now that I've got my Christmas tree ordered, it's time to get even more into the holiday spirit with a little ice skating in Robson Square, right in the heart of downtown Vancouver. And as you can see, I've picked a very good time to come practice. This place can get extremely busy close to Christmas. You can skate on Robson Square every day of the week all winter, and you can either rent or bring your own skates. This is so much fun. I may need to practice a little more before the end of February. And after a winter skate, there's nothing better than a little window shopping on Robson Street. In Vancouver, I'm Kendall Harris for The Express. The Spirit of Christmas is sponsored by Low Heat Town Center. The Robson Square Ice Rink is open until the end of February, and it's free. As far as those Christmas trees go, you can find out more online at evergochristmastrees.ca. You're watching The Express, and we've got some incentive for you up next for lighting up those trees. With today's Quality Assured Collision Road Trip, we're going to the light capital of Vancouver Island. Travel along with us as we explore the many marvelous attractions and activities of beautiful British Columbia on the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. Christmas is coming and there's nothing more iconic to the season than colorful lights, well, except maybe Santa Claus, <laughs> and Christmas trees, and elves, and candy canes, and of course, we can't forget the guy who got the party started, Jesus. Today though, we're focusing on the lights. More than 200,000 lights to be exact. It takes upwards of a thousand volunteers to make the Festival of Lights a reality. It's an opportunity for Ladysmith to shine. For Ladysmith now, Festival has grown into its largest attraction. It's, uh, yeah, Ladysmith is famous for, for the lights now. It's given the community huge, huge pride. And it's a good economic boost for the, for the business community and the entire town. The kickoff to the Festival of Lights is on the last Thursday of November. It's huge, with thousands and thousands of people, fireworks, and a parade. But just because the light up is over, doesn't mean the maintenance is. We check to see that the uh, strings are still in the trees. Sometimes the wind uh, plays havoc with them and they shake out. And uh, so we put those back together and if there's lights out, we'll check those and fix it up. People phone us and we We'll pop down and check on something if it isn't lit up. The Festival of Light started in 1987 as part of the town's heritage and revitalization project. It started here in the downtown core, but since then it spread to include Coronation Mall and the residential streets off First Avenue. About the last three years, uh, we started putting some LED lights in, and back when LEDs first came out, they didn't have the, the warmth, they don't have the glow and radiance that incandescent do, but we did put some in. And in the last three, four years, we've added more to the decorations. The last year, we, we upgraded power downtown. We spent $6,000 in installing new power box and, and new timers, so the lights don't stay on all, all night long. And then this year, we did another power box in the middle of town, and that was another $6,000 to, uh, to conserve uh, energy. And we also put a timer on the big tree and the, uh, the Chuck Perrin Memorial tree and the fence. So those go off at midnight stay, instead of staying on all night long. So we're cognizant of the fact that we need to save energy, but we also want a quality family show. The Festival of Light Society actually encourages local businesses to get involved by offering to pay for half of any light display that they might want to create. 
That offer extends to anyone. So if you think, for example, this spot here is a little bit drab, needs some, some life, contact the Society about going halfers. The festival adds about $2,400 to the town's hydro bill every year, a small price to pay, Duck says, for the benefits it brings. 20,000 people coming into town spending $10 each, uh, 2,400 to compared to almost a quarter of a million. It's, it's not a bad trade-off. More than 20,000 people from Vancouver Island, the Lower Mainland and the Pacific Northwest come to Ladysmith to experience the twinkling lights every year. It runs until January the 13th. In Ladysmith for Quality Assured Collision Road Trip, I'm Kate Bergen. Entertaining and informative, the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. Weekends on Shaw TV. Always something new and exciting. I love Christmas light-ups, and there's lots of stuff happening around the Lower Mainland as well. We've got some ideas with today's Express Spotlight. In this beloved family musical, The Wizard of Oz, Carousel Theatre presents a fresh take on the classic story about courage, compassion, and the meaning of home. As the dark yin of winter gives way to the light yang of spring, artists made candlelit lanterns light the night at the Winter Solstice Lantern Festival in the Dr. Sun Yat-sen Classical Chinese Garden. Prepare your holiday dinner by picking up your fresh produce at the Winter Farmer's Market. The market is open every Sunday at Nat Bailey Stadium. And that's it for today's show from Heritage Woods Secondary. You guys put on an awesome event. Congratulations. Their annual Seniors Christmas Tea. Did you have fun? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then all we have left to do is say thanks for watching The Express only on Shaw TV. And maybe Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.